Hi guys, today we are doing two examples from each theorem from theorem 1 to theorem 9. Theorem 1 basically states that the line segment straining the center of the circle to the midpoint of a chord is perpendicular to the chord. In the first example in this theorem, we are given that AC is 16 units, AB is equal to BC, and OA is 17 units. A is calculates the length of AB. OB is the line from the center of the circle to the midpoint of the chord AC. It is already indicated to us that AB is equal to BC. So if AC is 16 units, then AB is 16 divided by 2, which is 8 units. B is calculate the length of OC. OC is a radius. The radius is the line from the center of the circle to any point on the circumference of the circle. O is a point at the center of the circle and C is a point at the circumference of the circle. So we can conclude that if we draw a line from O to C, it is the length of the radius. Therefore, if OA is a radius and it is 17 units, then OC is also 17 units. Let's go to the second example in theorem 1. We are given that AC is 8 units, OB is 3 units, and OB is perpendicular to AC. Calculate the length of OC. OBC is a right angle triangle, and that is because one angle in this triangle is equal to 90 degrees. Even if it wasn't indicated to us that this angle is 90 degrees, we know that if a line is from the center of the circle and meets the chord at the midpoint, then it makes a 90 degrees angle. Because this is a right angle triangle, we can use the Pythagoras theorem to find the length of OC. R squared equals x squared plus y squared. The hypotenuse side, which is R, is the side that is opposite the 90 degrees angle. So R in this case is OC. If OB meets AC at the midpoint and AC is 8 units, then BC is 8 divided by 2, which is 4 units. We're already given the length of OB, which is 3 units. 4 squared is 16 and 3 squared is 9. 16 plus 9 is 25 and the square root of 25 is 5, so OC is 5 units. For theorem 2, I'm going to add one more example so that you get full understanding of what this theorem really is about. In simple terms, this theorem basically states that the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. This means that this angle is twice this angle, this angle is twice this angle, and this angle is twice this angle. This is the angle at the center and this is the angle at the circumference. So to find the value of x, we have to divide 36 by 2 which will give us 18. So x is equal to 18 degrees. Number 2, this is the angle at the center and this is the angle at the circumference. We are looking for the angle at the center and the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. So we're going to multiply 120 by 2 which will give us 240. So the value of x is 240 degrees. In the third example, this angle is twice this angle and this angle is twice this angle. So to find the value of x, we divide 95 by 2 which will give us 47.5. So x is equal to 47.5 degrees. Since this angle is twice this angle, we have to find this angle in order to find this angle. Angles around one point add up to 360 degrees. So to find this angle, we have to minus 95 from 360. That will give us 265. This angle is twice this angle. So to find this angle, we have to divide 265 by 2, which will give us 132.5. So the value of y is 132.5 degrees. This is theorem 3. We're also going to be doing three examples on this theorem. So theorem 3 basically states that the angle subtended at the circle by a diameter is a right angle. And we say that this angle is an angle in a semicircle and it is equal to 90 degrees. What this means is that the two chords that are drawn from the two ends of a diameter and meet at one point at the circumference of the circle meet at a 90 degrees angle. Example 1, we are looking for the value of x and we are given angle P which is 55 degrees. These two chords are drawn from the two ends of a diameter and they meet at one point so they make a 90 degrees angle. The sum of the angles in a triangle are equal to 180 degrees. So to find the value of x, we minus 55 and 90, which will give us 65. Therefore, the value of x is 65 degrees. Example 2, we are looking for the value of x and y, and we are given this angle, which is 104 degrees. We know that the radius is a line from the center of the circle to any point on the circumference of the circle. This is a line from the center to the circumference of the circle. And this is also a line from the center to the circumference of the circle. 
So this is a radius and this is also a radius. These two lines are equal. This is basically an isosceles triangle. The properties of an isosceles triangle are the two sides are equal and the base angles are equal. So this angle is equal to this angle. Now if the sum of the angles in a triangle are equal to 180 degrees, then to find the value of x we minus 104 from 180, which will give us 76. This angle is equal to this angle, so 76 divided by 2 is 38. So this angle is 38 degrees and the value of x is also 38 degrees. These two lines are drawn from the two ends of a diameter and they meet at one point, so they make a 90 degrees angle. X and Y add up to 90 degrees, so to find the value of Y, we minus 38 from 90, which will give us 52, so the value of Y is 52 degrees. Number 3, these two lines are drawn from the two ends of a diameter and meet at one point on the circumference, so this angle is 90 degrees. To find the value of X, we minus 52 from 90, which will give us 38, so the value of X is 38 degrees. This is theorem 4 and this theorem basically states that an arc or a chord of a circle subtend equal angles at the circumference of the circle. According to this theorem, we say that the angles in the same segment of the circle are equal. We are basically looking at this shape. As long as these points lie on the circumference of the circle, then this angle is equal to this angle and this angle is equal to this angle. In the first example, the value of y is 22 degrees and the reason is arc EF subtend equal angles. The value of x is 18 degrees and the reason is arc GH subtend equal angles. In the second example, the value of y is 16 degrees and the reason is arc PQ subtend equal angles. And the value of x is also 16 degrees and the reason is arc QR subtend equal angles. This is theorem 5. This theorem states that the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180 degrees. A cyclic quadrilateral is a four-sided shape that has all its four corners lying on the circumference of the circle. If it is just a four-sided shape but the corners do not lie on the circumference of the circle, then it is not a cyclic quadrilateral, it is just a quadrilateral. So this angle plus this angle add up to 180 degrees and this angle plus this angle add up to 180 degrees. To find the value of y, we minus 105 from 180, which will give us 75. So the value of y is 75 degrees. To find the value of x, we minus 83 from 180, which will give us 97. So the value of x is 97 degrees. In the second example, we have all the four corners of this four-sided shape lying on the circumference of the circle. So that tells us that this is a cyclic quadrilateral and the opposite angles add up to 180 degrees. 3x plus 2x is equal to 180. This and this will give us 5x, then we divide by 5 on both sides to find the value of x. 180 divided by 5 is 36, so the value of x is 36. To find this whole angle, we multiply 3 by 36, which will give us 108. So this whole angle is 108 degrees. And to find this angle, we multiply 2 by 36, which will give us 72. So this whole angle is 72 degrees. The same applies to these two opposite angles. y plus 2y equals 180. This plus this is 3y, then we divide by 3 on both sides. 180 divided by 3 is 60, so the value of y is 60. This angle, which is angle S, is 60 degrees, and to find the size of angle Q, you multiply 2 by 60, which will give us 120, so the size of angle Q is 120 degrees. This is theorem 6. This theorem states that an exterior angle of a cyclic quadrilateral is equal to the interior opposite angle. What this means is that this exterior angle is equal to this opposite interior angle. So the value of X is 98 degrees. It is indicated to us that angle C is 90 degrees. This is a cyclic quadrilateral, so the opposite angles add up to 180 degrees. 180 minus 90 equals 90, so the value of Y is 90 degrees. In the second example, this is the exterior angle and this is the opposite interior angle, so X is equal to 125 degrees. These two lines are drawn from the two ends of a diameter and meet at one point, so they make a 90 degrees angle. Therefore, the value of y is 90 degrees. The sum of the angles in a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So the size of this angle is 180 minus 125, which will give us 55. Therefore, the size of this angle is 55 degrees. 
The sum of the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So to find the size of this angle, we minus 90 degrees and 55 degrees, which will give us 35 degrees. So the size of this angle is 35 degrees. This is theorem 7. This theorem states that a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius at the point of contact. So if a line is drawn perpendicular to the radius at the point where the radius meets the circle, then the line is a tangent to the circle. This is a radius and this line is drawn perpendicular to the radius. Therefore, this is a 90 degrees angle. So find the value of x with minus 40 degrees from 90 degrees, which will give us 50 degrees. So the value of x is 50 degrees. These two lines are drawn from the two ends of a diameter and they meet at one point on the circumference of the circle, so they make a 90 degrees angle. Therefore, the value of y is 90 degrees. The sum of the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees, so to find the value of m, we minus 90 degrees and 50 degrees, which will give us 40 degrees, so the value of m is 40 degrees. This line is drawn perpendicular to the radius, so it is a tangent and it makes a 90 degrees angle at the point of contact. The sum of the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So to find the value of a, we're going to have 2a plus 3a plus 90 equals 180. Take 90 to the other side of the equal sign. 180 minus 90 is 90. 2a plus 3a is 5a. Then we divide by 5 on both sides. So the value of a is 18. To find the size of angle a, we're going to have 3 multiplied by 18, which is 54. So the size of angle a is 54 degrees. To so find the size of this angle, we multiply 2 by 18, which will give us 36. So the size of this angle is 36 degrees. This is theorem 8. This theorem states that if two tangents are drawn from the same point outside of the circle, then they are equal in length. That means that as long as this is a tangent and this is a tangent and they are drawn from the same point outside of the circle, then DC is equal to BC. When we look at the first example, to find the value of A, we know that the sum of the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. If these two tangents are drawn from the same point outside of the circle, then AP is equal to PT and this is an isosceles triangle. The properties of an isosceles triangle are the two sides are equal and the two base angles are equal. So this angle is equal to this angle. 180 minus 50 is 130 and dividing that by 2 will give us 65. So this angle is 65 degrees and this angle is 65 degrees. This is a radius and this is a tangent. They meet each other at a 90 degrees angle. So this is a 90 degrees angle. To so find the size of this angle, we minus 65 from 90, which will give us 25. Then this angle is 25 degrees. Now because we know that this is a radius and this is a radius, then this triangle is an isosceles triangle, which makes this angle to be equal to this angle. The sum of the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So 180 minus 25 minus 25 is equal to 130. So this angle is equal to 130 degrees. The angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. So to find this angle, we divide 130 by 2, which will give us 65. So the value of C is 65 degrees. In the second example, we are given that DE is equal to BE. Therefore, this is an isosceles triangle. This angle is equal to this angle. So the value of x is 30 degrees. The sum of the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So 180 minus 30 minus 30 equals 120. So the value of y is 120 degrees. These two tangents are drawn from the same points outside of the circle. So they are equal in length. Therefore, this angle is equal to this angle. 30 plus 30 is 60, so this angle is also 60 degrees. The sum of the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So to find the size of this angle, we minus 60 degrees and another 60 degrees, which will give us 60 degrees. Therefore, the size of this angle is 60 degrees. This is theorem 9, and this theorem states that the angle between its tangents to the circle and a chord drawn from the point of contact is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. What this means is that this angle is equal to this angle and this angle is equal to this angle. So the value of x is 72 degrees and the value of y is 65 degrees. This angle is between a tangent and a chord. So this angle is equal to this angle and this angle is also between a tangent and a chord. So this angle is equal to this angle. Therefore, the value of x is 100 degrees.
Thank you guys for watching. I'd like to know where you find a challenge in this chapter. So please leave a comment. We'll see you on the next video.